Dear students, so welcome, welcome to the PPT class. This is Mahmoud Mahabolam, lecturer in chemistry, EMDS, Raju Kutra Model College. The content on which I would like to deliver my speech is chapter 8. The name of the chapter is Mixture of Class 6. So, if you want to know about any chapter elaborately, you must have to overview the key points of the chapter. So, these are the key points of the chapter. The key points of the chapter are, first of all, mixture, and then solution, solute, solvent, water solution, diluted and concentrated solution, differentiate between concentrated and diluted solution, a colored solution, saturated and unsaturated solution, solubility, effect of temperature around solubility, liquid liquid solution liquid gas solution vaporization condensation filtration suspension collet and milk and finally milk is a type of collet its explanation and at the end of the class i suggest you some homework you must have to ensure these homework so at the very beginning of the class i would like to say something about mixture for the first time what is mixture Anything which can be prepared by adding more than one different substances or item where components are not evenly distributed and can easily be separated from one another is called a mixture. So if you if you want to know about mixture, you have to notice two points. Either all the components are not evenly distributed or not and second point is either all the components can easily be separated or not. If all the components are not evenly distributed and can easily be separated from one another then you can say this is a mixture you can consider the example of hot puffed rice mixture if you want to make this mixture you have to add hot puffed rice with soft onion sick pea green chili and tomato in this mixture all the components are not evenly distributed this is clear if you notice clearly and all the components if you want you can easily separate from one another so we can say what puffed rice mixer is a example is an example of mixture again mixture of sand and water you can easily separate sand from water and sand are not evenly distributed throughout the mixture so we can say mixture of sand and water is an example of another mixture uh, now, I would like to say something about solution. The mixture whose components are distributed evenly and whose components cannot be easily separated from one another are called solution. So, in that case, you have to notice either all the components are distributed evenly or not and either all the components cannot be easily separated or not. If you consider the following example, example of sugar juice, and milk and water then you can say sugar you cannot separate from water again you cannot separate milk from water and in both of these solution you notice sugar and milk are evenly distributed throughout the solution so we can say sugar juice and mixture of milk and water are the examples of solution So dear student, now I would like to say something about solute, the component of any solution that remains lower in quantity and that is dissolved by solvent is called solute. We know very well solution is the combination of solute and solvent. So what is solute? Solute is the component of any solution which must be present in lower quantity. I again say which must be present in solution in lower quantity and it should be dissolved it should be dissolved by solvent then you can say this is a solute again i would like to say something about solvent solvent is the component of any solution that remains larger in quantity again say solvent is the component of the solution that must be present in larger in quantity and each and every solvent should have the capability each and 
every solvent should have the capability to dissolve any solute then you can say this component is called solvent we can consider the example of sugar juice sugar juice is basically formed by sugar and water here sugar is used less in quantity dissolved by water so we can say sugar is here a solute again water is used larger in quantity and dissolves by sugar so water is used here as a solvent now i want to say something about water solution water solution is any solution around us where water is used as a solvent where water is used as a solvent just water is, is used uh, water is used, used as a solvent then we can say this solution is called water solution we can consider the example of sugar juice sherbet etc are the example of watery solution so dear student in this slide i would like to say something about uh, concentration of solution there are two types of solution one is diluted solution and another is concentrated solution in this slide you notice two beaker in beaker one we used here one spoon of sugar and in beaker two having three spoon of sugar so any solution where comparatively lower amount of solute is used and higher amount of solvent say water is used is called diluted solution here in this light beaker one has only one spoon of water so it has comparatively larger amount of solvent or water so we can say beaker one is the example of diluted solution in beaker three if any solution having comparatively larger amount of solute and lower amount of water is called concentrated solution in beaker two we notice here that in this case three spoon of sugar is used so comparatively uh, if we if, if we compare beaker two with beaker one here comparatively smaller amount of solvent say water is used so we can say beaker two is the example of concentrated solution So, dear student, this slide basically indicates the definition of diluted solution and concentrated solution. It has already discussed in the previous slide, so I don't interest it to spend any more time here. So, I want to go to the next slide. So, dear student, in this slide, I would like to say something about how can you differentiate between concentrated and diluted colored solution you know very well if any solution is a colorless solution there is no way to say either it is a concentrated solution or diluted solution but if a solution is a colored solution then based on the color you can say either it is concentrated solution or it is diluted solution in that case you can consider the three test tube that you notice in this slide in test tube number one all the test tube basically contains solution of copper sulfate you know very well the color of copper sulfate solution is blue in test tube number one comparatively contain lower amount of copper sulfate and for this reason the color of this test tube is lighted blue again in test tube number three it contains greater number of greater amount of copper sulfate and the color of this test tube is deeper blue as the color of the test tube number one is lighted blue it basically indicate a diluted solution again in test tube number three if it indicates comparatively deeper blue color it indicates basically a concentrated solution so the greater the intensity of the color the greater the concentration of the solution so based on the colored of the solution 
based on the in intensity of the color of a solution we can easily differentiate either either this a test tube indicates concentrated solution or diluted solution so dear student in this slide i will say something about saturated and unsaturated solution if you want to know about saturated solution first of all you have to know about saturation saturation basically of a solution is a state where the solvent say water is unable to dissolve any more solute okay so what is saturated solution in a certain temperature if the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved by the solvent is dissolved by the solvent then the solution obtained called saturated solution so what is saturated solution again i say if the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved by the solvent if this maximum amount of solute is present in any solution then you can say this solution is called a saturated solution so now i would like to say something about unsaturated solution on the other hand in a solution if the amount of solute dissolved is less than the maximum amount of solute then the solvent can dissolve that solution is called unsaturated solution so again say any solution if they are present the amount of solute less than the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved by the solvent then this solution you can say an unsaturated solution so dear student now i would like to discuss about solubility solubility is basically the capability of 100 g of any solvent the amount of solute that can be dissolved by 100 g of any solvent at a constant temperature is called the solubility of that solute say for example if the solubility of sodium hydroxide is 26 at 25 degree celsius temperature that means at 25 degree celsius temperature 100 g of water can dissolve 26 g sodium hydroxide now effect of temperature on solubility temperature has a great influence in solubility of a solution consider the example of salt and water solution dear students with the heating of the solution the undissolved salt the undissolved salt means the salt which is not still dissolved in the solution these undissolved salt start to dissolve so when you heat up any solution the undissolved salt start to dissolve that means after some time the entire salt will be dissolved so it can be said that solubility of a solution is increased with the increase of temperature so at the end of the slide we can say the greater the temperature the greater the solubility of any solution so dear student now liquid liquid solution the solution in which the liquid is used as a solvent and solid as a solute is called liquid liquid solution 
if the definition of liquid solid solution is like that so what will be the definition of liquid liquid solution so dear student just you think if the solvent and solute both are liquid then that solution is called liquid liquid solution is not it yes so we can consider there are number of example by taking a glass of water if we add one spoon of lemon juice in and stir well we will get a liquid liquid solution again similarly with the vinegar or acetic acid and water we can make a liquid liquid solution so if you want to know about any chapter elaborately you must have to overview the key points of the chapter so these are the key points of the chapter the key points of the chapter are first of all mixture and then solution solute solvent water solution diluted and concentrated solution differentiate between concentrated and diluted solution a uh, colored solution saturated and unsaturated solution solubility effect of temperature and solubility liquid liquid solution liquid gas solution vaporization condensation filtration suspension call it and milk and finally milk is a type of call it its explanation and at the end of the class i suggest you some homework you must have to ensure these homework So, dear student, now I would like to say about vaporization. Do you know the name of the process by which the water became quite dry after applying it? Yeah, it is vaporization. That is the process in which heat is applied to a liquid to convert it to vapor state. It is called vaporization. So, vaporization is the process to convert any liquid state into vapor state liquid state to vapor state this point is very important liquid state to vapor state is called vaporization again what is condensation the process of converting steam or vapor into liquid state is called condensation so uh, vaporization or condensation these are the process to separate the components of any homogeneous solution if you want to separate any homogeneous compound or component you have to apply condensation or vaporization or filtration we will discuss later slide these topics so go to the next slide please now dear students filtration to understand the process filtration let us see how pure salt is obtained by separating the impurities of uh, dust particle from the saline water by filter paper what happened after pouring the mixture in the funnel the impurity like soil particles free pure saline water slowly passes through the filter paper and is collected in the beaker under the funnel the impurities like particles of soil are detained by the filter paper so what is filtration the process of separating the particles of soil from the mixture of soil and water by the filter paper is called filtration again say the process of separating the particles of soil from the mixture of soil and water by the filter paper is called filtration therefore filtration is such a process by which solid 
substances can be separated from the heterogeneous mixture of solid and liquid. So again, if any solution, if there, are, uh, if this solution is a heterogeneous solution, then you can easily separate uh, impurities or any ingredients of the solution by the process of filtration. To carry out this process, you must need a filter paper. So, dear student, go to the next slide. So, dear student, now suspension. If you want to know about suspension, you must have to carry out the task. The required accessories are one glass, spoon, mud of soil and water the procedure first of all you have to take a glass and have to fill it fill two-thirds portion of it with water and then add one spoon full mud of soil to the water and stir it gently leave the mixture for some while what do you see at first the entire mixer seems to be muddy right after keeping it for some time the comparatively heavy particles of the soil are accumulating at the bottom of the glass and some particles of the soil which are light and minute are still in floating condition is not it in that time the mixture appears to be less muddy leave the mixture undisturbed for some more time do you see any change in the mixture? Yeah, some more small particles of the soil have gathered at the bottom, but the water is, is does not look completely transparent or clear. So this type of solution is called suspension. The definition can be the type of mixture of soil and water from which from which the components are partially separated it's called suspension the type of mixer of soil and water from which the components are partially separated is called suspension so dear students now colloids what is colloids the type of mixture where very small particles of a substance remains in floating or suspended condition in the middle of the particles of another particles and even if it is kept at rest it will never gather as sediments it's called colloid so if you want to know colloids you have to notice very attentively you clearly notice that very small particle in case of colloid very small particles of a substance remains in floating in the case of colloid the very small particles are uh, remains in floating or suspended condition in the middle of the particles of another particles and even if it is kept at rest if it is kept at rest the floating or suspended particles will never gather as sediments in that case the floating or suspended condition uh, suspended particles will never be gathered as sediments then this type of mixture you can say collets so for example milk fog aerosol are the family example of colloids so dear student go to the next slide please so dear student in this slide i would like to say something about milk as a special type of colloid we know very well each and every colloid has two phase one is dispersed phase and another is continuous phase milk is also a colloid because it is made of water and fat the small particle of fat as dispersed phase remains scattered in water which is continuous phase and it cannot be seen by necktie 
but with the help of microscope you can easily see it here you show the picture of milk here i represent a picture of milk that can be found with the help of microscope and it is shown in the figure 8.7 now go to the next slide in next slide i will discuss about the homework so dear student rest of the slide slide number 18 and 19 indicates homework uh, short question and critic questions all the questions are very important for your next exam especially for half yearly exam um, i suggest you these questions and you should memorize this question attentively and you should try to make sure that all the slides all the portion of slide and you have written in your handbook and make the proper utilization of all the slide so see you all after vacation and at the end of the class i suggest you i advise you you should not go out from your house stay at home at this condition